software, you want to click on this icon over here that's got the biggest tooth, not the medium tooth, but the big tooth. And then this is the system that comes up. Now, because this is a lab system, we've sent it over from our three-shape machine, and you've got to click on this three-shape communicate inbox. These are all the files that have been sent to our lab from the three-shape machine. And this is our patient right here. So you're going to click on this. It's going to, one time, it's going to show you a little preview. I clicked on something else. There's our preview of our case. All right. And then you're going to click this check mark that accepts the case into our lab system, which goes into orders. Now it might come up with a little error. So because we, this is a little bit more detailed information, you're just going to click OK and OK. And then it tells you it converted your monolithic zirconia crown to a monolithic zircardia crown with a section die and an individual die. That's all fine. Then you're going to click on this orders. Orders is our current orders and what's in our system right now. And these are those four cases that are currently there. This is the case that you're going to work on. You're going to double click on it. It's going to open the other software that's your design software. And then you're going to go through as the other video showed on how to design the crown and where to put the contacts and all those kind of things. But that's how you get the case into our system from the three shape machine. You do want to make sure that as you're working your way down here, um, it takes you straight to occlusal alignment. I find that it's good to refine the upper jaw. It'll show you areas, this little flying island they call it, that aren't connected that are going to give you errors later. And you just click select all and then refine. I don't know if they showed you that in the previous no. lecture, so I just wanted to make sure. No, they did not. Then you're going to do the same thing on the lower arch. Again, it's not going to remove the blue ones. It's going to take away the red ones, which are these flying islands. It doesn't like those. The machine will give you a hard time. And what are the blue ones? The blue ones are typically around where we've either added a crown or we added a die or something. There's a not necessarily an error, but a void. So it's kind of saying, hey, look at this spot. But those red areas, if we tried to print those later in the system, it would give you a hard time. So you can see it just smoothed everything out nice and smooth for us. Now we go to occlusal alignment. You want to make sure this is good. This one actually came in pretty nice. Um, and this is just the alignment of the arch. And then go through the design as they did previously. If you ever get lost in the system, it's always telling you what you're doing over here. So just real quick, I'm not going to go through all the details, but like it says, trim upper jaw. We've already kind of refined it, so we don't need to do that. Trim lower. If we wanted to add something or take a tooth off because we were making an Essex retainer or a Pontic of some sort, we could sculpt and we could remove teeth, but we're not necessarily doing that right now. Now it's talking about our margin line. It's always going to tell you what you're doing over here, but just follow the instructions in that other video. One of the things, are you still recording? Yeah. One of the things that's kind of hard to get used to is the controls of, and you can see, I just want you to see this. This is kind of an update in the software. It's showing you a sectional view of the margin as you're kind of coming across. So it'll show you exactly if you need to put your margin somewhere different. So in this situation, there's kind of like a little double margin area, but the margin itself is up there on top. It's not down there. Or if it is, it's a little double margin which it looks like it is. So to change that margin, you can just drag that margin along. You can double click and then add dots. And change whatever you need to in it to put your margin where you want it. Once you're done, you click next again. Oh, I was gonna say one other thing that I'm gonna show you is the controls on the mouse. They're a little funny. This is your insertion axis. It's telling you where you potentially might have undercuts. Um, it looks good. We've set this in the other software. But on the right hand, on your right click, if you right click and hold, it'll rotate things. If you scroll the mouse or the wheel, it'll zoom in and out. But if you click on the wheel, it'll move it in the same direction around your screen. 
and then right click and hold is whatever you're trying to do. So right now it wants us to do the insertion access. So if I, if I left click, excuse me, it'll, it'll give me a new insertion access. So if I want to change that, I can move it around and put it whatever I want it and then click on the insertion direction. I think it's a double click. It'll also optimize it for you and try to do it itself. Sometimes it's right, sometimes it's wrong. You can see that dark area is a little bit of an undercut. So this, this preparation had a little bit of an undercut. And then once you like where it's at, I'm gonna rotate it a little bit because you also need to look at your interproximal contacts. You need to kind of get everything centered and the margin centered. Then you click set over here and that'll set your new insertion axis. So there is a little undercut on this prep, but then just keep continuing through until you get to your crown design. Okay. We stop there.